Hi. 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 Yeah. It there's it's just us. Oh, I don't you got a little sleepy seat on you. <laughs> so we're having our morning um water and, and crackers. Can't see. And then uh we've <laughs> got tea. And we're playing in the sandbox and taking apart pallets. May I have a kiss? Okay, we're gonna get started. Looks to be about 40, and it's pretty early. It's only, I don't know, 8 something. Here's the pallet I'm gonna take apart. And the dog that won't leave me alone. And I wanted to maybe go over how to get out um, when the nails get in really deep. You want something like this, you can put it up this way, and then you pound on the back of the handle like a chisel and it will chisel up and go underneath your nail and I'd show you but I don't have a tripod <laughs> for my phone um, but yeah I'll get it under there and then show you so I've just kind of pounded it up underneath and you see how you get it this one was in there kind of deep and the wood is like really close to the bark of the tree so it's softer so it kind of just falls apart, but um, you kind of just keep working on it and until you can get it out with the hammer. I don't know if it'll catch yet. It will. Yep, it caught on there. And then you, uh, it's coming up. Ta-da! First nail. And these are like, they've got a little spiral to them. I don't know if you can see that. They're not really meant to be pulled out. They resist. I got one down. I tend to sit on the pallets while I'm taking them apart. It's a lot easier than squatting. I can't give you a push or kick in the pallets. Woohoo! I had a feeling this would happen. I broke my nail puller. And it's like in there. It was really handy while it lasted, and I've got two boards left on this side. <laughs> Crap. Oh, since my, my favorite little tool broke, I was using that because it did the least damage to the wood and the wood is we're, we're trying not to have to saw it apart because if you can get the nails out you have a longer length um, some of them are too brittle like I mean there's this this one obviously is shorter now <laughs> the first palette I took apart had really nice wood this one um, is like older and a little thinner definitely not as good a quality half of the slats had been replaced already um, so I just went and got our new hammer so now we're gonna do it with two hammers I'm just gonna pound on one to get the other one you know for leverage and try not to split apart all of these boards cuz they're not they're not that sturdy <laughs> well yeah one year garden <laughs> the first attempt failed I just split it <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go find a crowbar. This big old screwdriver, so I'm gonna try and make that work either in here or just um, like I was doing with nail puller. So I wedge it in here and pull it up, and it's just gonna split. It's gonna split every single board where the nail is, which is what most people usually do, and then they like put the nails in somewhere else. <laughs> but, um,. I was hoping to not have this problem, but that little nail puller was working so well for the whole first, you know, one and a half pallets. I managed to just wedge this in here and like pry at it, but there's a split down the middle that wasn't there before, and then I went at it from the side and just managed to pop the nails out, which is what a lot of people do, but it's actually a lot more work than having that little nail pulling tool that I broke. So I think I might actually just want to go get a couple more of those and then from here I mean depending on 
how you plan on cutting. Like sometimes you go to pull the nail out and the head, did you see how it bent a little? The head of the nail will actually like bend up on either side and flake off because it's a crappy nail. Um, this one looks like it might actually be doing that. And it already just got pulled through a piece of wood, so. Oh, and I just messed up that one. Anyway, this is generally not a one-handed operation. But yeah, I got that one out. Um, I'd rather pull them just in case we need to cut them. But if the top does break off, you can just, or not, I mean, you can do it now. You could just pound them in. Doesn't really matter. I just don't know if we're going to be cutting them, and then you should probably mark where the nails are so that you don't wind up screwing up your other equipment when you go to cut the wood. Say hey, beggars can't be choosers, but when you go to look for pallets, this was the last one I took apart, and just look at how much thicker and nicer the wood was. It's obviously, obviously either just a different company or made it all a different product. Got a, the nails were crappy on this pallet with the crummier wood. I didn't have any nails heads break off, but this other one they used crappier metal in their nails and I got a couple that I had to pound in. But you can still make a bed. This one's not going to last as long. This one's going to actually be pretty nice. So for, you know, if you were uh, looking for free pallets, you could probably be a little pickier and find some pretty nice wood if you took your time. So not all egg cartons are alike. I got these at Woodman's, and they're a cage-free organic brown egg. Um, and they, I thought it was kind of annoying while they were eggs, because you have to like open this and open this, and then you get your eggs, and it's kind of, um, it, I don't know, it just, it felt weird, but the second life of these as seedling Posts is really useful. They keep the moisture in really well and they keep my kid out of them <laughs> pretty well. I put them on a shelf in like a high shelf at night but during the day I put them out in the front yard where they're gonna get the most sun because we have a southern exposure. But I don't have a shelf to grow in the house because my son has access. I watered that a little too much last night. It is soup. I'll help you, little guy. I just can't. It's a one-handed thing. Anyway, that's a little kale baby. Little baby kale. Living in the soup. Um, so yeah, these four are kale, and then these six are the turnip top, and they just popped up on, like, one day they germinated. And they were just already tiny little dots in a day. It was amazing. And the parsley, I think my seeds are too old and they didn't want to come up. Because I think I did this about a week ago now. So yeah, week old little seedlings and this guy's getting his adult leaves. They're looking pretty nice. So I'm going to plant something in this one here in a minute. Crocuses! Nah, it's not going to focus. Got some more over here. I couldn't get these to germinate. I put two in each hole. I might try that again. And then this is the kale that came up right away and the turnip seven top that came up right away. And these are like, I think the kale I just bought. This is new this year. But this one I'm pretty sure is like two years old. And then I'm going to put in lettuce and cabbage. So I'm going to try these two. Um, and I already have these started, so let's not spill them. And I don't take good care of my seeds, because the last couple years I've kind of just been kidding myself about the garden. We didn't take good care of it. I want to try the parsley again, too. But I don't put them in bags. I'm going to probably take better care of them this year. But hey, you know what? They're all in a pot, which is where they all should start. So while I've been outside taking apart the pallets, it got up to 50. So it's 10 degrees, nicer. I'm just putting the start mix in. Those are the lettuce seeds. So I accidentally dropped my cabbage in here. 
So it's parsley, parsley, lettuce, 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 cabbage, 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 lettuce, lettuce. <laughs> oh well. It's good to put a little notation after you plant your seedlings just so that you don't forget which way things go. Like here, I have each one I always do the same for groups of two. And then, so this one's parsley, like I know these two are parsley, and I know that for this one, the butter crunch lettuce goes this direction because I drew a little arrow there going this way and then this one's cabbage going this way and those are lettuce again because I dropped my cabbage so now I'm gonna give them just a little drink each one gets just a little drink and then since I'm gonna have this container closed i um, not worried about like soaking them because the moisture is going to just, I don't know the word for it, it's just going to spread evenly because it can't escape. So the soil is already a little bit moist. So I think that's enough. I'm going to live on this bookshelf until they start popping up their little heads and then I'm going to put them on this windowsill while my son is in school and when he gets home they're going to go back on the shelf or under a light in another room and out there I have the that's where I put it during the day the ones that are up and then I'm going to move them to a container so that I can bring them in at night because it can where your odds are we're going to have freezing temperatures at night where we live we're like we're a zone five, but we're just at the like bottom tip of it, like or the top tip, whichever way that was, where we're almost a little bit colder, and we have lake effect because we're right by Lake Michigan. So weather determines where my seeds live while they're coming up. I can't wait till we have our own chickens and we can make our own little brown eggs, but. Meanwhile, you do the best you can with what you have where you are. So, we buy the cage-free brown and pretend that we had chickens that made them. Ah, <laughs> uh, breakfast for the boy. Are you eating? Got your eggs and your juice and your water? You tired? I'm too.